I got a phone call off Fran just after the Mexico World Championship last year in March and he, I think he was struggling with his putting at the time and um, he, he wanted a, a second opinion. So I arranged to see him at Bay Hill. Uh, so I met him on the Monday for the first time and um, sort of obviously spent some time with him. And he, he was fairly open. I think he was admittedly said he was struggling at the time and you could see there were quite a few things that he, he needed to get better, um, you know, in comparison to what his, you know, um, the competitors were, the level that his competitors were at. And uh, I did a little bit of research prior to meeting Fran, you could see that he, you know, he's putting stats over the years, weren't at the level that they needed to be at in terms of to meet his, his goals and expectations. So we, we had a good couple of days at Bay Hill and, and um, sort of set down a plan for the rest of the year, um, which involved, you know, a fair bit of work and change, but he was really eager to, to, to get involved in that. So this is the data that the SAM system collects and um, this was when Francesco came to the studio in April so I'd already worked with him for a period of time, I started with him at Bay Hill sort of the previous month so we'd kind of um, broke the back of a lot of the work so but the studio was, the studio of it was good because it helped us tailor a few things and one of the things that came out was, was putter fitting and uh, how the putter could help influence his aim. So. He'd have a bias to aim slightly left, and that was predominantly because he had a big push bias in his stroke. So even here in the studio, you can still see sort of a very slight left aim, which is very um, functional still, and then um, a little bit of opening between setup and impact. So that, that this figure here, 0.7, means the difference between, um, or difference in terms of what, where the club is at impact relative to where he aimed, so 0.7 open. Now, um, by changing the putter and going to a putter that had no line on and uh, was a thinner blade, um, we could definitely shift his alignment bias. So his alignment bias was, you can see here, just slightly to the right, which is actually better for Fran because it really helps him and, and it, it encourages certain feelings that he needs in his forward swing. So 0.7 degrees is a, a small bias. Um, and then you can see the face change actually gets better. So there's a little bit less opening. Um, and I would say like the, the change in the putter, Fran's alignment is actually very good. I, wouldn't, I would say even now it's less than that 0.7 that we see. And um, like I say, from there he can really commit to those feelings that he has in his stroke to start the ball online. He's very hard working and committed. So, uh, you know, we made some big changes early on and, and it didn't go necessarily really smoothly to start with. There, were, the, you know, there was some sort of teething problems, and, but his resilience and it, because of his hard work and application, he kind of stuck to the process and uh, just got his head down and was working through it. He'd won at Wentworth, he'd won at Quicken, Quicken Loans in the US. He'd come back, I'd seen him before he went back out to, um, I think, uh, the John Deere Classic. So I knew that he was in good form, not just in his long game, but his putting, I think, was coming together. So you go to a tournament like that thinking, yeah, he's got a chance. He's one of the best players in the world and it's a major championship. So you know that if he performs to his ability that week, he's got a chance of winning. And uh, he, you know he, he looked good in, in in practice. So yeah, come Thursday, you, you're eager to see you know how how he gets on. He's a lovely fella. In many ways, he's a shy character. But what a golfer he is, especially over the last couple of months. There's no one in the world played better. And now he may be just one birdie putt away from becoming the Open champion. There was a sort of a nice little area for sort of coaches and family members and stuff that was part that was near the locker room and it had like a big screen on, and um, it was really un it's a horrible sort of period of the time, is it? Because you know there's so much at stake, and you kind of like wanting to watch but not wanting to watch. Um, so I actually don't think I watched that put. I actually think I looked away and then reacted to the 
the, the reaction, so it's kind of a little bit of a blur at the time. Dreamed of this when he was a kid, practiced putting green as a 12 year old, this to win the British Open, now it's a reality. Final birdie, and at last Francesco Molinari can give rein to his motions. Wonderful putt, wonderful round of golf. Is it to be his third win in recent weeks? And in that, those three wins, he has dropped a total of one shot. Yeah, it, it was. It's nice, obviously, to be there and share that moment. I mean, obviously, when he held that putt, you're thinking he's got a really good chance to win, but then. You, you kind of immediately kick into, like, what's your job? And there's a chance that there's a playoff, isn't there? So you know that, like, Fran's thinking the same thing. So you know that once he's, like, signed his scorecard, he's probably going to just go and get in a quiet place. Generally, that would be the putting green, hit a few putts, keep warm, keep your mind active. So my immediate thought was, right, I'll go to the putting green, see if he's there, and then you're helping just manage his thoughts, aren't you, and, and stuff like that. So I just kind of headed over to the putting green. Luckily saw Peo and Fran was there. So you, you're kind of going through the motions in many ways, aren't you, on that green? Because you know there's a very good chance he's going to win, but you're preparing for, you know, the plan B. And then, um, so we're just kind of talking through some stuff. And that again, when I, I can't really remember, it's a little bit of a blur. And then I think it's Todd, he turned round and said, congratulations Francesco, you're the champion golfer of the year. And then like, I think I was the, the only person stood next to Fran, so it was a case of like, you know, embracing and sort of sharing that moment. So it's nice to sort of be there and share that moment with him. It's a shame that, you know, like Dennis Pugh and Dave Aldred and Rob Goldup weren't there as well because it's obviously a team effort and, and they've been working with Fran for a lot longer than I had and it would have been great for them to have been there as well but it was just, I was fortunate that it was me at that moment in time but yeah, it was a nice moment to share with him.